Hi guys, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Barbie and I post videos on beauty and lifestyle. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe down below. All you need to do is click the little subscribe button. This video is going to be about our journey to try and conceive a baby and also my diagnosis with polycystic ovary syndrome, which I'm going to call PCOS. Obviously, if you are a male friend or family member who does not want to hear me talk about trying to conceive, menstrual cycles and all that good stuff then please don't watch this because it makes me cringe just thinking about it but I really want to make this video because I googled so many things when I got diagnosed with PCOS and one thing I did was watch a lot of YouTube videos and I did not find a lot of people from the UK talking about this and their experiences with the NHS so that is why I want to make this video for anyone who might find this helpful and I also want to say that I am not a doctor Please don't take any medical advice from this video. If you think you have PCOS or are struggling to conceive, please go and see your doctor and they will be able to help you and point you in the right direction. We both feel so lucky that we were able to conceive naturally and going through the whole TTC process is really, really, really hard for some people. And you know, if you are struggling and you've just been diagnosed with PCOS, please don't give up hope because many women with PCOS conceive naturally. Try and find other women who might be going through a similar thing. Forums are great. It can be really hard not having any friends or family who really understand what you're going through. And also sometimes your partner might not even quite understand. I know for me, like Tony was a lot more relaxed about the whole thing than I was. And I think that is just the difference between men and women. So I want to keep this video quite positive And I want to tell you my journey with PCOS. If you don't know what PCOS is, it's basically a condition where your ovaries aren't functioning normally and it kind of affects how your ovaries work. I will link a page from the NHS down below and it gives you all the information on polycystic ovaries and all the symptoms you need to look out for. But there are three common features to PCOS and one of them is irregular periods. The next is increased male hormones and the third is polycystic ovaries, so actually having physical cysts on your ovaries. And they say that if you have two of these features, then you are classed as having PCOS. So that basically means that two women could both have PCOS, but they could be having completely different symptoms and it may be for completely different reasons. So that's just something to keep in mind. It affects a lot of women. It is very, very common. It's especially common in Asian women as well. So just to give you some background about my experience with PCOS, when I was 17, I was diagnosed with an ovarian cyst on my left ovary and I had it surgically removed. Again, when I was 21, I had another ovarian cyst surgically removed on my left ovary. And after that, I was advised to go on to the contraceptive pill. So I went on to microgynon, which I think is just um, the most commonly prescribed contraceptive pill and it seemed to work for me. So I was on that for many years. During that time, I think that the pill actually masked all of my symptoms because when I was younger, I was quite overweight. I had kind of hair growth problems and things like that. When I went on the pill, I managed to lose three stone. I did go to the gym. I was eating really, really healthy. So I did make those lifestyle changes as well. But I found that I was able to lose weight a lot easier than I had before. I also was having a regular period, obviously, because the pill was controlling that. So all in all, I felt quite good. I was getting my ovaries scanned every six months and they never came back with anything alarming. So I always felt reassured that when the time come that I did wanted to try for a baby, like everything would be fine. So last January, I decided to go off the pill. We didn't want to start trying straight away. It was more just to kind of give my body time to adjust so that when the time did come, everything would kind of be back in sync. And that is when every everything went crazy. I didn't have a period for about two months and I gained a stone in about three months so I knew something wasn't quite right but the biggest indicator of all was the fact that I started having really bad hair growth on my face so all here and here and basically my neck um, fully grew a beard and obviously um, when you're growing facial hair it is a sign that you have got increased male hormones. I went to the doctors in about April I think and they told me that you know you've just come off the pill give it time that it takes a good three to six months for your body to return to its usual cycle for the hair just try laser or um, electrolysis or something like that so I did try laser but that was not doing any 
good to my hair, it was just getting worse and worse. And then I just waited, I waited to see what happened with my period. Obviously, um, we did decide that we wanted to start trying for a baby, so we were trying, but it was very casual. I mean, I was having such irregular periods that we never knew when we were meant to try. My cycles were varying between 47 days to 60 days, and a normal cycle is 28 days. So you know, it's like double the length of a normal cycle. I still did do the ovulation tests now and again just to see what was going on, but I found them really confusing, the fact that a line would still come up even if you're not ovulating. And obviously it's really expensive to get the smiley face ones. And yeah, it was just really, really confusing. I fell pregnant in October and I stopped the pill in January. And between January and October, I had five periods. So I felt that every month when a normal person with a normal cycle would get two opportunities to try for a baby, we were getting one and it was just a lot of waiting and counting days. I think that is what was the hardest part, just not knowing when my period was going to come and sometimes actually thinking I was pregnant because it had been so long, um, but just getting like negative tests every day. That was um, really, really, really frustrating. So by the time August came around, my periods had not become any more regular and I decided to go and see my GP again. He told me again, you know, you need to wait. It can be up to a year. Um, but he did refer me to go for a scan on my ovaries. It was a internal scan and it took a few weeks to get the letter through, but I was really grateful that they did refer me for that. At the same time, while I was waiting for my referral letter, we decided to go and see a doctor privately. Um, we're really lucky that we have health insurance um, through our work and that we were able to do that. And I think the cost for the appointment, if you do it um, without using health insurance was around £200. So I definitely would recommend doing that if it's something that you can afford or have the opportunity to do through work. The first doctor I saw was just awful. He again, he, he just told me to wait, wait and see what happens. Um, I haven't been off the pill long enough. Um, he said that I should try laser for my face. <laughs> and I was like, I have, you don't know what's going on with my face. I said, can you give me any medication for it? And he said, no. Um, he was just really unhelpful and quite rude, actually. I remember coming out of the hospital and just calling Tony and being like, no one wants to help me. The GP doesn't want to help me. This doctor doesn't want to help me. I decided to call our insurer again and I asked them if I could go to see another doctor for a second opinion. And this time I requested a female doctor. And they said that, yeah, they did have another doctor. She actually specialised in PCOS. And I was like, great, because... I kind of had the feeling I had PCOS. Tony was convinced I had PCOS. We'd looked up the symptoms online and he was like, it seems to match with everything that you have. And I was like, you know, the doctor hasn't told me, so I'm probably fine. I was just completely burying my head in the sand, to be honest. I just wanted to convince myself that everything was fine. Although I think deep down I knew, I knew something wasn't quite right. In the end, I went back to Shirley Oaks and I saw the most amazing doctor. Her name is Dr. Binny AJ, but she was so, so sweet and so caring. And on my first appointment with her she decided to get my bloods tested to check my hormone levels to check testosterone so I did that and then two weeks later I went back to see her because I had had my scan by that time um, I had an internal scan and actually when I did have the internal scan she told me you've got cysts on your ovaries so that was my first kind of symptom which I knew could be PCOS and she confirmed that I did have PCOS and that I also had something called adenomyosis which I'd never heard of before. And it's basically the um, lining of your womb will grow inside the wall of your womb. She said to me, not to worry, you're gonna conceive, it'll be fine. Um, she said, give yourself three months, I'm gonna put you on metformin and also inofrolic. Um, so metformin is a drug which is used uh, to help regulate insulin levels, helping your body to process the sugar that you eat. So um, she told me to take that and she also told me to take inofrolic, which is basically um, uh, something called inositol, I think, um, and it is a sachet and you just mix it in with water, it doesn't have a taste and you drink it twice a day. So I was taking metformin morning and night and inofrolic morning and night. Metformin you need a prescription for um, and you have to buy it over the counter. In a frolic you can just order online. Um, I was taking the metformin because she believed that when 
I was eating sugar, my body couldn't process the sugar and the sugar was causing the increased male hormones. So hopefully the metformin will be able to stop me having so much of the male hormone in my body, which will stop the PCOS, which will hopefully help me ovulate and conceive. So using metformin for PCOS is something that I had never heard of before. It's only when I started researching and watching these YouTube videos that I found out that this is something that is being used a lot more in the US. Um, in the UK, I think it's something that is still quite new because when I went back to my GP and told them um, I was on metformin, they didn't know what I was on about. When I um, felt pregnant and I started having my midwife appointments and I told them I was on metformin, they were equally as baffled. So if you've seen your GP and they are reluctant to put your metformin, then you should definitely go and ask to see a gynecologist. I think it might help to say that you're wanting to confirm if you have PCOS rather than I'm trying to conceive because I think as soon as you mention that you're trying for a baby they want you to wait a year whereas if you say that you want to find out if you've got any gynecological problems they can't really stop you from being referred so that's something that I would keep in mind if you are going to do this through the NHS rather than going private. I want to talk a bit about actually starting on metformin. I started having 500 milligrams once a day for a week and then I upped it to two tablets, one in the morning, one in the night, so a thousand milligrams overall. It is brutal. <laughs> um, the first few weeks I had the worst diarrhea. It was horrible and uncontrollable. I also felt so nauseous to the point where I just had my head on the table in the morning. I couldn't even um, you know, even like sitting up would cause the nausea. It was really, really tough. But that did only last for maybe three or four days. The diarrhea just carried on. Like even when I was pregnant, the diarrhea carried on. So I don't know if that's just me. Some people say that when they ate certain foods, the metformin would flare up the diarrhea. So I think you need to kind of watch what you're eating. And even though you're on metformin, you still need to watch your sugars. I also found that for the first maybe two or three weeks, it really, really suppressed my appetite. Like people who know me know that I have a huge appetite. I'm the kind of person that when my friends have finished eating, I'm like, are you gonna eat that? So for me to not be able to finish my meal was like quite shocking. And I was actually able to lose a few pounds, um, but my appetite did come back. So yeah, just be aware that when you do start the metformin, you might wanna maybe take a few days off work. When I went to see the doctor, she said, try metformin and inofrolic for three months. If you're not pregnant after three months, then we will will put the dye through your tube just to make sure that nothing's blocked and you know do some further investigation. When I left her office I said okay bye see you in three months and she said no no you'll be pregnant by then and I was like okay. Yeah so I started on the metformin beginning of September and I didn't have a period by mid October. 13th of October I did the pregnancy test and I was pregnant and we were shocked like when we had that appointment with Dr. Vinny AJ, we thought, right, I've got PCOS, this could be years, you know, we didn't think it would happen straight away. So we were so happy, so grateful, just like in absolute shock. <laughs> That's the only thing I can say, like, we were so, so, so shocked. Maybe we could relax a bit more. I don't know, it might have been psychological, it might have been the fact that, you know, our egg, the egg and sperm just met that month, but yeah somehow it happened if i did want to try it again i probably would take the metformin again because um she also told me to take the metformin for the first i think it was eight weeks after i was pregnant so i carried on the metformin i carried on the inafrolic and i think um that actually kind of stopped me maybe miscarrying i was getting a lot of bleeding in my first trimester which i will talk about in my first trimester video i also had to take progesterone pessaries um, which again I will talk about in my next video. If you have any other questions at all, please feel free to message me on Instagram. I'll leave my name down here. And yeah, I hope that if you're going through the same thing, if you've just been diagnosed with PCOS or you have been asked to start metformin, this video is a little bit helpful. Again, just remember, even if you don't have PCOS or metformin, trying to conceive can take up to a year. It is perfectly normal. We were very, very lucky that we were able to do it in 10 months. Yeah, I hope that this video was helpful. Um, I'm gonna have some more pregnancy related content and my next video, I think I'll talk about my first trimester. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.